Hey guys, it's Liz and we're flipping things. And today we are talking about the top five things I didn't know or I wish I knew before I started selling on eBay. Um, I am by no means an expert, but there are definitely things that I have come across um, in the last eight months that I'm like, oh, I wish I would have realized that I could have been better prepared when I started selling on eBay. And I'd love to hear in the comments um, if there was any like sort of light bulb moments for you when you started selling as well, where you're like, oh my God, I wish I had known this before um, because it makes a difference. So stay tuned and we'll talk. Welcome back guys. Um, we got a lot of snow yesterday for like the first time and I'm in Buffalo, which is weird. Um, it's the middle of January and we're just finally getting some snow. So I did a little time lapse. I will throw it in at the end of the video if you're interested in seeing um, my yard go from green grass to snow covered. It's super fun. It's not even a time lapse. I don't know. I don't know what you call it. I just kept doing like video updates. Anyways, it'll be at the end. We can talk about that later. Let's talk right now about the top five things I didn't know or realize about eBay before I started selling on eBay. And I wish I had, or I wish I had understood them better because um, some were things that caused me some trouble in the beginning and some were things that made me put off starting selling on eBay because I was nervous. Um, so let's talk about them. Number one, the very first thing I wanna talk about is sell-through rate, eBay sell-through rate. Um, and the fact that sales take time. So when I first started learning about reselling, I was watching videos and I'll be honest, I was watching like Gary V who's like make $300 in a weekend, just going to garage sales. And he would go to garage sales and he would buy stuff. And then he'd talk about how he flipped it on eBay. But what he didn't really share was how long it actually takes to sell that stuff. It's not just throw it up on eBay and bam, it sells. There is a sell-through rate, and I did not fully understand that when I first started selling. Um, so that was a big learning curve for me is that, okay, I've listed all these items, but now I need to wait for them to sell. And I can do everything I need to with SEO, and I can tag everything properly, um, but you still have to wait for the right buyer to come along, and that takes time. And that sort of skews into seller limits. Um, so when you first start on eBay, there are seller limits. You're limited in how many items you can sell. And as time goes on and sales happen, you're able to grow that because um, they'll keep increasing your limits to a higher dollar value and a higher item amount. But in the beginning, it's very low. Um, and so I didn't, I was just sourcing in my house because we were completely quarantined and couldn't leave. We couldn't go anywhere. So I was just going through and selling stuff that I had sitting around the house. Um, but if I could go back and do it again, I would be a little bit more thoughtful in what I was listing in the very beginning to move those items faster because you're limited in how many items you can list. So if you list 20 items and that's where your seller limit is at, um, and they don't sell, well, you're stuck. You've just got to wait for a sale. You can't list anything else until um, something happens, right? You need to have products and inventory moving in and out, um, and then eBay will up your limits. That was my, um, my mistake in the beginning, is I didn't understand the seller limits, and I didn't realize that they would literally cut you off and you can't list anymore, and I didn't understand... Um, sell-through rates and all the categories have different sell-through rates like my dvds and video games have a very fast sell-through rate those move quickly they don't really sit in inventory for very long if it's anything decent um where clothes for me is like really long it's a really long sell-through rate for me i don't do well with clothes they just don't move and what winds up happening at least in the beginning was i was going through like old clothes that the boys had never worn and stuff that I had that I don't use. And I was listing clothes and that stuff wasn't moving. And so then I was stuck because I had more stuff that I wanted to list, but I couldn't actually do that because I hadn't had any sales and I had hit my sales um, limits. eBay for me, at least last year, was really good about increasing my limits anytime I got close to hitting 
their magic number. So if I could list up to say 90 items and I was getting, I was at 85, I would often get an email from them saying, congratulations, we've upped your, your selling limits. And they were always really, I never even had to call or request my um, restrictions be increased. But I do know that people have run into that and it, it can be problematic. So um, when you're first starting out, be thoughtful in listing stuff that you know is gonna sell and you know is gonna move because that moves the needle with eBay in order to get those restrictions lifted. So it's kind of a big deal. I didn't understand it at all when I first started. Um, the second thing that I think was <laughs> and the reason that I waited as long as I did to start selling was shipping. I was super intimidated about shipping. I didn't understand it. I have for years ordered solely from Amazon just so that if I was like sending gifts to someone, just so that I didn't have to package it up and ship it off to them. I it was just like this unknown world that existed, the post office and FedEx and UPS. I just don't do it. So that was very intimidating for me. Um, and it shouldn't have been. Um, once I started making sales and started shipping stuff out, the process through eBay is really easy. I do everything through the eBay um, website and you get their discounts. Um, and the one thing I will add that I learned that I didn't know was that you can get a ton, if you're using Priority Mail, a ton of free boxes and flat rate envelopes and all kinds of stuff for free from the United States Post Office. And that was something I didn't know going in either. And so I was often running out to like Walmart or Dollar General and grabbing boxes or whatever I needed to ship, um, where now I go on USPS.com and I order the free boxes and I've just always got them on hand and it cut down my shipping costs significantly. So don't be intimidated by shipping, but do know that there are ways to cut down on your shipping costs, um, like the free priority mailboxes and mailers that I just didn't know was a thing. I had no idea the post office was just giving away boxes. Um, and you can only use those if you're shipping USPS priority mail or priority flat rate. Um, you can't use them for first class mail. Keep that in mind. If I'm sending stuff first class mail, typically I'm using my um, bubble mailers, which I buy in bulk on eBay. There's a link in the description if you're curious. Um, and I just buy them in bulk, like I buy, buy the case um, to cut down on the cost of those. So they wind up not costing me nearly as much as what it was costing me in the beginning because every individual order I was getting, I was running out and getting the specific shipping stuff I needed from a retail store. Don't do that. Don't do that. Um, but don't be intimidated by shipping. The one thing I will say is when I first started and I'd really never shipped anything, every time I'd get an order, I would jump on YouTube and I would search like how to ship sneakers on eBay. And it would, <laughs> you know, there's a million tutorials. It can be done. It's not as scary as it seems. Um, don't be intimidated. Number three, um, sourcing quality selling items is not as easy as it looks. Um, when I first started, I was watching like Gary V and a lot of these channels where it was just like, they're just like, just run into this thrift store or stop in at this garage sale. And you're going to, you're going to find five $50 items, five items you can sell for $50 that only cost a dollar. And it's super easy. And, um, and what I learned from that is that's not totally accurate. That's not really how it works. There is a big learning curve in knowing what to find, um, and sourcing the right items. So yes, you need a lot of items listed in order to be making very consistent, good sales every day. But the, the quality of those items and the, um, demand for those items matters. And that's not something that you just know inherently. It's something that you have to learn over time. Um, specializing in a certain category probably helps you learn that category faster um, and I saw a little bit of everything. So there's really been a learning curve, but like in the beginning, I think I said it before I was selling a lot of like clothes and I just, I can't walk into a thrift store and, and buy clothes that are going to sell. I just don't know how to do it. I don't know the brands. Um, it's not something I'm, I'm good at and I'll, 
Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe. Trevor's here. Um, it is just not as easy as it seems. And so give yourself a break. Our goal is just to get a golden, like just to get a play button. No, our goal is not to get a play button. Do you know how many you need for a play button? We just really want a hundred thousand. No, 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 we, no. We just, we just no, we do. I want, I want a play button. Okay. Um, don't beat yourself up if you don't know in the beginning and just know the more that you go out and the more that you buy and the more that you look up on eBay when you find it and the more that you sell, the faster you learn what is in demand and what isn't. Um, but don't expect just because a bunch of YouTube, <laughs> big YouTubers made it look super easy. It's not as easy as it seems to source the right stuff. And that is okay. You will find your niche. You will find um, what you're comfortable selling. And then those things will appear more than you think. They will just start showing up. Um, it's sort of like when you really want to buy a red car. And so you start seeing red cars everywhere. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Um, once you start to learn what sells well for you, that stuff will start to appear. It, it just will. Um, but don't beat yourself up if you're not great at it in the beginning. I don't think anyone's great at it at the very beginning, no matter how many YouTubers try to make it seem like it's every day they go out, they're finding these like amazing, awesome items. No, I don't think so. I think they're not showing you all the bad days that they have and all the days they go to three thrift stores and they don't find anything. I could be wrong, but I think that's the truth. Um, number four, fees. Fees, fees, fees. This was not something that I truly understood at the beginning. I'm not even sure it's something I still understand, but it's important. Um, when I first started selling on eBay, I was still on PayPal. Um, I'm on managed payments now, but I just like every day, PayPal would just drop money in my account because things were selling. And I was like, this is so, uh oh, to Liz from Trevor. You are a super friend. We're doing Valentine's. We're doing Valentine's because we have to send their Valentine's into school two weeks early so they can quarantine. Which I find odd, strange, a little strange. Anyways, I was just like, wow, all this money is just getting dropped on my PayPal. This is the bomb. This is so awesome. I didn't understand the fees at the time. And now I pay a lot more attention to you know, there's final listing fees. So, um, I'm, I'm learning the fees over time and there's all different fees. There is eBay fees, there's shipping fees, especially if you're doing free shipping, which I avoid after some early mistakes. Um, there's PayPal fees. There's just final listing fees. Um, I still use free listings. I don't have a paid subscription to a store yet, but I think this month I'm going to upgrade. Um, and I'm still trying to decide if that's the right thing to do. I guess I'll make a video about that. But, W, but, um, I didn't understand the fees and there is, there's certain examples I can give you of if I had understood the fees better, I would have made more money. I would have done better. Um, sneakers, shoes, for example, this summer I sold, I have something to give you. you have something to give us Yeah. from Trevor. To who? I can't show you guys yet. It's a surprise. To our viewers. Oh, what's it say inside? Have a super Valentine's Day. Have a super Valentine's Day, you guys. Um, so I was selling a lot of sneakers. These were sneakers like I would go out and I'd buy Nikes at Burlington. And then I would turn around and I would sell them on Amazon for a pretty good profit. And I had a lot of sneakers that I sold between like 80 and $95. Um, what I didn't know, because I just hadn't done my research, was that with eBay, if you're selling shoes that are over $100, there are no final listing fees, final value fees, final, final value fees um, added in, but they have to be over $100. And so I was coming in right under $100 and I made a mistake. I should have priced them higher and waited um, 
because then I would have gotten higher revenue and I wouldn't have lost out on those fees, which, you know, that's money in my pocket because I just didn't know. So there's all kinds of stuff like that. If you're, especially if you're selling in a specific category, really do your research on the fees and understand that. It was something I just didn't really pay attention to in the beginning and I'm a little bit of regret now. Not a lot, because I'm learning. And part of learning is like making mistakes, right? Um, speaking of learning, my son um, did his first Twitch stream yesterday. Um, he, he's doing, he's streaming his music on there. And there is the funniest clip. I'll see if I can upload it into this video. If I can, it's gonna be right here. I have no idea if you guys were able to see that, but I'll tell you what, I have watched it a hundred times and his laugh, I told him, I'm like, you're learning. This is all learning. But his laugh in that video, I swear to God, it makes me laugh so hard every time I watch it. Okay. My last number five in my top five things I did not know and wish I had known about eBay is um, in terms of listing. So what I tend to do, and I'll be honest, I'm still guilty from time to time when time is not working out for me, is like I would go source and then bam, I would list like 30 things on eBay in one day. And then I wouldn't list again for a week. And then I'd list 20 things the next week. And then I wouldn't list again for a week. Um, and my sales are okay. Do you want to know when my sales are best? When I'm listing four or five things every single day every single day because that's making things happen in your store which tells ebay there's something interesting going on and i swear they're showing it to more people i really believe if you get 30 items take six days and list five things every day for six days and that will benefit you more than than listing 30 things in one day and like i said i'm still guilty of doing that from time to time just the other night i had um some time that I wasn't anticipating and I did. I went on eBay and I listed like 15 items all at once and it would have been better for me to spread that out over three days, um, I think. But I do think it's better to list consistently even if it's a smaller amount than to list everything all at once and then not do anything for several days. I know that is harder than it seems, but if you photograph and measure and weigh everything all in one sitting, then you can just spread out when you're actually posting those. You can even put them as drafts. You could go as far as the listing is complete. It's in drafts and just don't hit post um, until the next day. I think even that would be beneficial, but right. I'm learning. We're all learning. We're all, I hope we're all learning, right? We're all learning together how this works and it's not the easiest um, thing to figure out, but I'm curious if there was anything that you experienced when you started selling that you were like, I did not realize this, or this wasn't totally clear. And I wish I had known this. Um, tell me in the comments uh, for some reason, I got to tell you, I don't know what's happening, but I'm like YouTube. I, I don't know, like if I've changed my tags or I got to look at my settings it keeps locking my comments. Like it either completely takes comments and says comments are turned off and I didn't turn comments off or it like locks them and I can't re respond. So that is what I'm going to do tonight is basically spend as much time as it takes to figure out why I can't respond. Why are my comments locking? Has anyone come across this before? It's the weirdest thing. It started with one video getting comments turned off and I have no idea why. And I tried to turn them back on like three times and I don't know if I like pissed off YouTube or what. If hopefully I get it figured out tonight. I apologize because as you guys know, my favorite thing in the world is to like have a conversation in the comments and now YouTube's not loving me. It's so rude, rude. Anyways, um, I hope everyone's having a great day. It is Wednesday here. Um, I will jump into my little, you can see my snow from yesterday, which is very exciting. And um, I will see you guys tomorrow or Friday. I'm trying to get on a more 
um, consistent schedule of when I'm uploading. I'm not doing great at that. I'm trying to do four days a week and um, it's harder than it seems. So have an awesome day. I will see you guys tomorrow or Friday and then we can celebrate the weekend. And I'm ready for the weekend. I don't know about you guys, but I'm ready for the weekend. It's only, it's only Wednesday. <laughs> All right. Bye guys. I don't know if we're going to get snow, but this is, it's 8.40 a.m. My Christmas inflatables are still on the lawn, but they say there's snow coming. 8.40 a.m. Actually, a couple of snowflakes just hit me. I'm also doing the backyard at 8.40. There definitely are a couple tiny snowflakes coming down. Um, but that's what we got. That's not even snow, that's just like frost. You can see the river. Is the lake effect snow coming? We don't know. All right, 10.15 update. Snow's coming down. I don't know. Can't really see the river anymore. And this is 10.15 out front. It's definitely coming down. Can't see the driveway anymore. 11.20, snow is still coming down. Uh, I'd say there's an inch. I think my husband's actually, maybe it's more than an inch. My husband's out there. Is Kevin out there shoveling? Here. So, and the roads are totally covered. You can't see them at all. And I've seen the plows. Okay, and here's out back at 1120. Um, you can still see a little grass, but like you can see, um, grill. And can't really see the it's really, this is lake effect. So it's just these big, fluffy snowflakes. All right, one o'clock, the snow has sort of stopped and they're actually getting the roads cleared. But then I heard it's gonna start back up again. Yeah. City. And one o'clock out back. Can't see the grass anymore. Definitely got some snow. 4.15, you can tell the boys have been outside playing. There's Trevor Snow Angel. The roads are plowed, but now it started snowing again. And 4.15, backyard. Can't really see anything now, just snow. I don't know, I think we got about three inches. And it's still coming down. I don't know if you can see. 